we believe that we were the first big LT launch which immediately focused on handsets from the beginning. So we also offer a lot of data devices and the data, especially the MiFi, 4G MiFi, is very, very popular with our business users. Uh, but the majority of our customers are handsets, you know, consumer users. Um, and we, the day we launched, we already had a range of about five or six handsets which were LT capable. We wanted this to be a mass market launch. We strongly believe that the end user gets a strong quality uplift uh, from the use of an, a 4G handset. We were very clear that we wanted all our LTE handsets to be capable of the latest technology on 3G as well. So dual cell HSDPA, all of our handsets must have dual cell HSDPA, which means that for the customer, at the end of the day, it's quite an easy proposition. They don't need to choose between dual cell HSDPA and LTE, they know that you know by taking a, a 4G um, upgrade with us, they can get the best of 3G and the best of 4G in their in their subscription with the the right handset. So it's, it's a very easy choice. Yes, I mean we have the current challenges are all about managing the uh, interaction between the 2G, 3G, and 4G networks. So as I said yesterday, we have a very complex uh, situation. In, uh, in our network because we have uh, we still are integrating the the legacy 2G and 3G networks so from the X uh, OUK and X T-Mobile sites we've also optimized our sites by removing any overlapping sites so we, we you know we've uh, removed thousands of overlapping sites which were not helping the user experience and by doing that we realized also some synergies and at the same time we've integrated sites from two different networks with two different PLMNs into a single network and that way we can all focus on optimizing that single network so already in most of the main cities in the UK we have already either completely integrated the networks or we are halfway through so as you can imagine it was a massive uh, engineering challenge and what you know it's a little bit like um, sometimes I call it like trying to build castles on uh, three or four layers of shifting sands so the traffic is shifting all the time and as we integrate the sites the 2G traffic is, is changing, the 3G traffic is changing as we integrate and remove and decommission sites. And so it's a, it's a very delicate mix to keep that together. And you know, all of the change, you know, there's, there's been you know, thousands and thousands of people working on the network doing lots of changes all the time. As we change, any change we do, we need to update all our databases and we need to make sure that all the different types of adjacencies are, are maintained. And that's a massive challenge if you look at our network where you have not only the vertical integration between 2G, 3G and 4G adjacencies but also the cross-network adjacencies between the two 2G networks and the two 3G networks. Uh, the interaction you know, within the LTE system itself will be another big challenge. So between 800, 2600 and 1800 we need to make sure that we have the right uh, solutions to allow us to control those interactions between the LTE layers and then from the LTE layer to the 3G and the 2G layers and back. What we'd really like is to have the intelligence built into the network rather than in the device in terms of controlling access to various layers so that we can effectively manage which types of handsets can access which types of layers and manage the transition between them. Um, so um, every single sphere, every single area where we can compete, we aim to be the best. And we respect our competition, we know they'll fight hard, but we are very confident that we have what it takes, especially the right people and the right partners, to stay ahead of the competition at every step.